morning, uh, good afternoon, whenever you're listening to this. Uh, thank you so much for uh, attending this, and uh, I welcome you to an, another opportunity, and there are many opportunities in the world here, to learn uh, about your business. Uh, that's so important because most uh, people in GCM or in ALCA have a uh, nursing or social work or healthcare background, and we don't have business background. So this and any other uh, you know opportunity that you have to learn more about business is a great thing because you are running a business. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that I can open the door to more business information here. And we have a closed door here. So hopefully uh, I, have, I will see in your mind that door opening and processing more information about how to run a really great GCM or ALCA business. We have here a unhappy woman. Uh, she is looking very strained. Her hands or fingers are over her forehead. That usually means, oh my God, what am I going to do? And this may be you or someone you know uh, at some time, but <coughs> even the most experienced GCMs experience this all the time because starting a business is really hard and you will make mistakes. You will go backwards and, you know, have to go forwards again uh, in any business, whether you're making widgets, whether you're making uh, software. E Elon Musk <laughs> even <laughs> does this, <laughs> and you can see that in the news lately. Uh, you know, we all do it in creating a business and struggling and this woman is really struggling because she's just started a GCM business. And this is a composite of a lot of people that I work with over the years. And she, I'm calling her Mary Means Well. And she has uh, Mom Loves You Best GCM in, uh, let's say, New Jersey, where I used to come from. And she called me uh, as her business was failing. That's why, you know, her head is in her hands. And she had no business plan. Uh, and many people start this way. She had a very rudimentary one, but not a business plan. And a business plan is there to teach you how to essentially create a timeline for yourself. And the plan will give you, you know, what is the product you're selling? Or multiple products. Who's going to buy that product? So your target audiences. Uh, how do you get to those target audiences? And that may be third parties, and you've got to name all of those and adult children. And uh, and then specifically, how do you reach them through what media? Uh, through what one-to-one -one meetings, etc. And um, and then basically, you know, uh, day by day, you're you're going to stretch out, you know, your plan for, you know, what 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 are you going to buy? How much is that going to cost? Because it's really, I mean, what I, you know, if you have an office, even a home office, you have to buy printers, you have to buy uh, iPhones, etc., and that's a cost to the business. And so, a part of a business plan is really a financial forecast. And um, very few people really know how to do this, and it's easy. And to tell you the truth, it's in the hand book of geriatric care management. It's been in there since, I think, version three. And Jack uh, Herndon, did the, who's a CPA, uh, excuse me, he has uh, an MBA from Stanford. He's Nina Herndon's uh, husband. She's, you know, a very well-known person in ALCA. And he wrote a number of chapters with me. And he did this financial forecast. And this is a magic thing. So you can just go to chapter 13 and find it. And it tells you when you're going to break even. And how you figure that out is the number of clients you have times what you're charging them per hour. That's your income. And then all the things you had needed to buy that I just talked about, you know, rent, equipment, 
salaries if you know usually startups don't have them even for yourself uh, you know technical te technological like you need an iPhone you need a computer program you need a marketing program you need a, a client program all those things that's overhead so you have to figure out when you have enough clients and hours from each of those clients times the uh, hourly that you're charging when your income is more than what your outgoing expenses and that tells you when you're going to break even it's pretty a simple thing the examples there and how to do it she had never done that and she needed to know and what you all need to know in the very beginning we all do I did uh, when can you take a salary? And it tells you much more. It tells you then how many clients you have to have to hire somebody new, how many clients you have to have to, you know, maybe, you know, expand. Um, it's a great, so she hadn't done that. Uh, and she had, you know, not done the business plan, as I said, so she had not targeted the customers who could pay her because this is a business that really can only target the top 10%. And that is because, very simply, uh, geriatric care management is not that expensive per hour, but you want to keep clients over a long period of time because it's expensive to keep opening and closing and then chasing new clients. And and uh, over time, say seven years, it becomes expensive. But sometime in that seven-year period, because these are aging individuals, home care is going to be necessary. And that is really expensive. So put together, you only the top 10% can really afford you. And she didn't understand that and was, you know, basically advertising to anybody. If you want to know more about that, and I'm not advertising this book. It's been out for 14 years. Just use it. I hope you have it. And uh, Bob O'Toole wrote, a great chapter that's been in there I think through all four editions but look at the fourth because he updates it um, and it's uh, a great chapter on you know revenue sources and so uh, she also and this 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 is you know the the stake in the heart for all of us uh, we are social workers, nurses, healthcare people, and we were we didn't go to school to run a business. We went to get to school to serve people and give our services away. Of course, we were paid. We got a paycheck, you know, every month or every two weeks. We never thought about, you know, all those expenses and breaking even and how much the heat cost or the air conditioning or the new equipment. You know, you just got your check. So. As a result of, you know, being a social worker and a nurse, you feel very, very guilty when you're when you're running what you are running a business. <laughs> you feel guilty about charging people if they say they can't afford it. You don't put down the billing, you know, in your billing sheet or you lower the cost. And so the truth is you have to bill 85 percent to make it. And um, most of us don't even know it. She had no idea. And so, you you know, how do you find that out? You have a billing program and the billing program can print out reports about what percentage of hours that you're paying your, your, your social workers or yourself are billable. <laughs> and so um, she totally believed that most people couldn't afford her because she's a social worker and she only billed one, once a month. A, big problem because cash flow is king it really is you've got to learn that uh, sort of like Bill Clinton said that you know when he came into office the bond market was king <laughs> he didn't know that and he's a smart cookie uh, so at any rate, what I did was I coached Mary to rewrite her business plan with a value proposition that she wanted to make money and understood she had to make money and that she would target the top 10%. I convinced her to do a competition survey, which many people don't do at the beginning. Again, it's in the handbook of geriatric care management, both in chapter 18 and in the marketing chapter by Marilee Orsini, who knows what she's talking about. She read a really successful business business step business to senior bridge uh, they 
essentially they modeled her entire business and senior bridge is now Umana. so she's a very successful woman and she left senior bridge after a year and started a really high powered marketing firm and uh, she she writes the chapter on marketing each time so she's got a competition survey in there and then she created this financial forecast that I'm talking about in Excel and again look in chapter 18 to find out uh, when she would have enough money to take a salary verse you know by looking at the number of clients she had to get so what does it prompt you to do get more clients because you understand that's your money source um, and I helped her to create a mindset and really it's you know it's all in our attitude in our mind and you know she had a mindset to be good but you can be good and make sense that's a Marilee Orsini uh, quote so the mindset needs to be you can make money and still do good and sh the other thing is that many of us denigrate ourselves as social workers and healthcare workers um, that you know lawyers are worth more to us than us and doctors are worth more than than us that's not true you do an incredibly difficult job it is a job where you take a lot of negative energy in your body you turn it out in a care plan that really is tough you guide the most difficult families that lawyers and doctors don't want to deal with they give them to you because these dysfunctional families drive them nuts they still do their little part but they're not going to work with who hates who in the family to get care for the older person and also you know she had a reason to make money she had kids who needed braces and she wanted to buy a new hybrid I do too that's why I put this in <laughs> I'm about to uh, just to you know save the environment and save my expense and gas and she learned finally to bill 85% of her time weekly and to watch her cash flow so in business there are three P's and you know business can be reduced to this the first is people and that's you you have great GCM clinical skills that are worth worth millions really you know plumbers you love you know when your when your plumbing goes out a plumber is worth a lot he knows a lot of technical information you are someone who and they charge more than you do I mean try a plumber or you have tried plumbers so you know you have great clinical skills that are worth a lot of money and of course you have to it's what the traffic will bear if you're a GCM in New York Alka in New York you're going to be able to charge more because that's what the traffic will bear in the Midwest you, you need to charge less but you need to keep on increasing your 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 hourly and you have to feel that you are worth all of this and um, she basically you know uh, you know go she already had a GCM full GCM toolbox because she had clinical skills but she was missing this attitude toward profit and that's what I want to teach you that's what's going to open the door here so why well, can I help you I'm going to go through this fast as you well know hopefully uh, I wrote the handbook of geriatric care and management with many other uh, like Marilee Orsini um, you know incredible experts doing chapters I wrote the book mom loves you best uh, with uh, Callie Peterson uh, another aging expert and um, you know this is one of the biggest problems in geriatric care management warring siblings usually having to do with something that happened when they were very young and in essence there wasn't enough love to go around and so it all comes out at the end when you have them fighting over money um, I I'm an expert teacher uh, in geriatric care management and I've taught at San Francisco State in their master's program Berkeley in their master's program in social worker teaching geriatric care management in the University of Florida in their um, master's program in geriatric care management and I'm an expert in the aging family and this is one of the greatest tools that you can have because aging is not about an older person it's about the family the family is a family system and many times 
times you have to work with the family, not answering, not getting daycare for them or anything like that, but you have to get them to buy in to getting care for the older person and get them as best you can to support what you're doing with the older person. And so you now have to know family dynamics and really family systems, and that's systems theory. You know, the, you see Santa Cruz is a system. Uh, Elon Musk's business is a system. And systems operate in many of the same ways. So this is a great book about it. And again, it's me writing it and a lot of other experts, Rita Gottak, who started um, the geriatric care management program at Stanford, the first in the nation, uh, Steve uh, Barlam and Bunny Dibnis, who are like, you know, aces in the hole in, uh, in this industry, and uh, they did a great ch uh, chapter on tools. And then I'm an expert in GCM startups. I wrote the first operations manual in geriatric care management uh, with a forms manual attached to it that's been out since 2012, and many people People have bought it and I'm an expert consultant with scores of GCM business startups and I'm a you know I really like to work with startups so what are you going to do here um, this is going to cover one session it's going to be approximately an hour we're going to note your question we want you to note your questions and send them in you can be able to um, write them in at the end uh, have a notebook candy and ask for help okay <clears throat> These five critical steps that I'm talking about have a daunting stairway, and the daunting stairway is there, it's there for anybody that starts a business. 50% of businesses fail in the first year. So, you know, it is a rough climb, a dubious, tenacious climb, and we're going to, you know, help you here. So what we're going to cover is survey the competition and customers. I talked about that. Have financial literacy. Give, sir, give a concierge service. Gold star. Four seasons. Going down the Danube on Viking cruises. You're going to, I'm going to teach you more about billing 85% of your time. And the last is don't sell services, even though they, you're, you're delivering a service. Create products of services. So the first thing I want you to do is test your business mission. And your business mission, uh, well, first of all, have you written one? Uh, you have to... Be 100% clear in your business mission, you may not understand this, to make money. So does your business mission, if you've even written it, does it mention money? This is really important. Does your business mission state that you, and this is subliminal in the way that you write it, it's, this is advertising, it's marketing. Um, marketing doesn't always, you know, you do it in a subliminal way. Um, and your mission needs to say that you're 100% clear that you're serving high-end entitled clients. Those concierge clients that I explained you have to have to, to be able to you know, keep your business going and get paid. <clears throat> Does your business plan state, and I talked about a business plan, that you are charging these high-end clients a high-end fee? And do you know that there's a limited market for GCM success? And it is only GCM or ALCA people who are focusing on <clears throat> this top 10% market. So <clears throat> it has to be, your mission needs to be 100% clear that you're serving high-end and title clients. And you do it in a subliminal way that marketing does. Uh, you know, just think of the Danube, you know, the, the Viking cruises. If you watch Downton Abbey, they were the main sponsor. And, you know, all those people that were on that lovely boat, they were dressed to the tees. They had the most exquisite meals. They had a four-star, five-star service on that, uh, that barge going down the Danube. And in a subliminal way, Viking cruises is telling you, you know, these are the type of exclusive people that 
uh, you know, that buy these Viking cruises. And it's true, it's very expensive. And the top 10% can afford it. So this is what you have to do. You have to give clues. So this is a, you know, a mission statement with a clue. It doesn't say I want, you know, I need to make money and I only want you as a client. It says premium care management, premium is the care, the key word here, services and choices choices is important, delivered by extraordinary, another key word, healthcare professionals. So, you know, this is a really good mission statement. You've got to have these words in here. Gold star, I like premium much better, but, you know, play around with the mission statement. And then everybody needs to memorize that, especially you because you have to know that you need to build these kind of people. <clears throat> Number two is test your financial literacy. Um, financial literacy <clears throat> and making money. Um, you know, there are several points that you need to really pay attention to. The first is to always collect a deposit. Why? Because the first month of geriatric care management or ALCA care management is the most expensive because they're bringing you this, like, you know, garbage bag of you know problems that you've got to solve and they're and they're difficult so you've got to put together a care plan that solves all of the problems and solve a lot of them in the first month that makes it very expensive in the first month and the second month is going to be less expensive because you have it more under control in the third month less so in the first month if indeed you you know you put in all these hours to you know get this get all these problems solved and at the end they you know they don't want you anymore they can fire you and not pay you just think Donald Trump I came from Atlantic City you know and he's famous for not paying any of the contractors for those uh, you know gambling casinos that he made go bankrupt the rich have a really not all not everybody's like donald trump but the rich have a way of not paying their bills and so you're stuck and that's why you need the deposit the deposit needs to be an average of what the first month would be and you know it's a ballpark you need a signed service agreement before you deliver any services and so i teach over and over again i've done many webinars about this that you get the service agreement signed usually over Adobe because it does it right away <clears throat> and the deposit usually through PayPal but you can use Square before you go out at the end of the inquiry and you're like a car salesman here the car salesman always moves to the sale are you ready to move forward and that may be like, you know, heinous to you because you're a social worker, but you have a business. You have to, you know, you have to do these things because you don't want to go out, spend three hours, do your geriatric assessment, do all the work. And then at the end, they'll say, and you say to them, now here's the contract, let's sign it. Uh, we're not ready to move forward and that can help too so you've got to do it in a telephone call and uh, I you know have a webinar that I'll probably do again about the two-part telephone call um, you want to promptly invoice and that has to do with cash flow King cash flow and so you you know you need to make salary uh, if you don't invoice, the money doesn't come in, and, it, and your 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 receivables come in very slowly. And I'm going to show more about that later. But you basically have to have someone in charge of bill of you know an accountant, hopefully, or you know a bookkeeper that can keep the money flowing. So because every two weeks you still have to make payroll. And the money's coming in slowly, and that's a dilemma. So you have to be, you know, really be on top of payroll, and therefore you can't you can't bill every month. It just it's you're not going to make it. And then you have to measure billable hours while you know this is the 85 percent while providing supervisory super, supervisory support um, to the uh, care managers you're working with or to yourself uh, <clears throat> because you know we falter by oh he can't afford it or she can't afford it and the way you can track this again is to get you know a billing program Billing programs have uh, reports they'll 
they'll print out. And most billing programs will have a report of the billable hours and what was billed and what wasn't billed. And you're, you know, looking at the whole thing because you've paid a salary for all the hours your employees, you know, worked. So if they're only billing 50%, you're in sad shape. And if you're only billing 50% because you're a one-stop shop, you are too. And then you've got to bill travel rate at a full time, if at full rate. You know, I just get so frustrated with so many people that tell me they don't bill travel rate. Travel rate is a lot of your time. You can go out 50, 50 miles. I don't think very much more in the county or the area that you're uh, taking clients in. But travel's a big big part and don't say well I, you know they can't afford it or you know that's not fair it's fair to you to get your uh, Prius and to get your kids braces and to keep your company a healthy company because a healthy company is a profitable company so bill full uh, travel rate and then <clears throat> financial literacy or other things you've got to know all almost all the fees are going to come from the ad adults, older adults, assets, and trust. So, in that competition survey, you really need to be able to look at in your area that you serve, you know, where the people in the top 10% are, and uh, you can do it through the trust through the, through the census, and you can also do it um, with zip codes. Um, and I cover that in another area. Um, so you got to market to populations uh, over 70 with assets of more of more more than 500k, and really it's up to a million. Um, and you, but the good news is there are over 1,700 markets in the U.S. that have this, and actually that's an old figure. More, you know, since the Trump administration came in and the tax. Um, you know, the tax bill that just passed that really, you know, funds the the uh, wealthy, um, you know, companies have more and more to pay. And there, you know, there's this, you know, all, terrible gap in the United States where so many people are wealthy and so few people are poor. So there's a lot of wealthy people who can afford you. And so you have to target them and then uh, you want to do a market sizing and that again is in the handbook of geriatric care management in cha chapter 18 and this tells you how to find those people and it may you know uh, there's enclaves there's gated communities everywhere and that's where the wealthy live or you know there's always a wealthy area in your county you need to find it <laughs> and uh, again, you can do it through zip codes. Um, I've done that for many times with people that I've worked with, big companies, and uh, through the um, through the census. Okay, these are the concierge clients you're going to serve. These are an exaggeration, but I thought this was funny. And, uh, you know, these concierge clients have to be served for a long period of time to make a lot of profit. Because, again, it's very expensive to close cases, open cases, and then find new cases. You know, there's a lot of money that you have to expend in doing all this. So keeping a case for a long period of time is what you want to make your goal. Now, um, there, I will just go through this very quickly. Who are the concierge clients? They're the old money. I worked in Pebble Beach for 25 years. I had a lot of old money, Pebble Beach, California. And they are quite characters. Uh, new money, that's like Donald Trump, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, anyone who, you know, was of a medium or low income and then, you know, made their fortune. Uh, and new money is looked down by old money. Uh, so these are called the nouveau riche. And then the third class is really... Um, uh, doctors, lawyers, professionals who have made a lot of money and saved it well and invested well, and they are in the top to per, top 10% as well. And then there are uh, this very interesting class of people that have defined pensions that they've worked all their life. Um, it was in a time in you know post World War II up to probably the 80s, where you know teachers, subway workers you know anybody that had a union 
uh, auto workers. Uh, watch, watch Michael Moore's film. His dad was an auto worker. They could send people to college. They, they finally had arrived in the middle class. So they had a retirement, and those retirements are up, actually put them in the top 10%. There's a great article about it in the New York Times. I've posted in my blogs. You should sign up for my blogs, but if you're interested, I can send that to you. So these are the concierge clients. They tend to be incredibly entitled except for the subway workers and the teachers because they lived a you know a very um, you know uh, simple life uh, because they didn't have a lot of money <clears throat> the nouveau riche are more like these people um, old money doesn't do this they're subtle um, so um, these, this is who you have to serve for a long period of time. <clears throat> and serving concierge clients for a long period of time to make a profit takes these skills. First of all, you, you have to do what you do already. Provide a GPS through the healthcare needs that they have so that you can deliver, uh, you know, the best care and you deliver that by, you know, using your continuum of care and bring in the right care for them. Um, but you, this is the key. You need to do this seamlessly. Do you think Viking Cruises doesn't seamlessly deliver meals? Do you think the four, Five Seasons or Four Seasons Hotel uh, doesn't deliver seamless, you know, a hotel experience? You have to really model yourself off all of that and, you know, deliver seamless care. And really, doesn't everybody deserve that, especially people that are having a health care crisis? Uh, and an aging crisis, you know, is prompted by the healthcare crisis. You have to learn how to deliver concierge care. You have to have what you already have, a full GCM toolbox, and know all those community resources. Because <clears throat> uh, entitled clients may, you know, they may need private drivers or they may demand them. Um, they may need, and you know, I talk from experience here, uh, they want people that, uh, care providers who look, first of all, wear whites, and second of all, <clears throat> um, you know, I've been asked many times in Pebble Beach, the person needs to look like a model. Well, models really work, you know, they're not models, but they, they're attractive women. <clears throat> or men, but they have to, you know, in the very beginning, if they're dealing non-medical care, you know, you can get a good looking person who has all the CNA skills. But a model, you don't look for a model when somebody needs a Hoyer lift. <laughs> so you need to have boundaries yourself. But uh, you need to look for the, you know, private chefs or something, you know, in your in your database, in your in your um uh, in your in your community resources database, you have to have all the service. You know, somebody to deliver the laundry, somebody to deliver the house cleaning, someone uh, to arrange parties. All of those things are, you know, one of the things that they want. And then you've got to re, uh, you've got to. I talked about care providers. You want to you know, only have. In all cases, no matter for who, skilled background checked uh, home care aides, but these people really demand it because uh, you know they they only want the best, and uh, and also uh, these people need to usually wear whites, and because they want to look like servants, just think Downtown Abbey. It hasn't gotten a lot better, um, and. <clears throat> They, uh, you know, they can put up, the care providers can put up with the needs and the demands of entitled clients because entitled clients are very difficult to deal with. Usually money doesn't make people happy uh, and it brings uh, people to be highly, um, you know, outrageous in their demands. And so... Um, you want to get people that can put up with this and, uh, you know, deal with it well. And there are a lot of people out there. And the last thing is that you want to serve the whole family, meaning that um, this is Bunny Dibnis, who I consider, you know, uh, a wonderful, fun, genius type geriatric care management. She's manager. She's been at Live Home for probably, I don't know. 35 years, and she's now a, a key mediation specialist in the LA community. <clears throat> but she, in her chapter in the um, 
care managers in the aging family and tools really talks about how you have to serve the whole family and you it's not about again that an older client it's about the whole family because you have to coalesce them to care you know to arrange care for uh, their parent we're not going to do this poll today but um, I would like some feedback if you could um, in the future for me to do um, further webinars are you looking for business coaching uh, an operations manual or an online class to learn business and sell products uh, which is something that I've moved into okay so um, you need somebody who can simultaneously juggle multiple problems and keep high-end, long-term profitable customers. And, um, and, and this is a multitasker. You really need to be a multitasker to be a really good care manager. <clears throat> First of all, those people need to carry small caseloads because multitasking doesn't mean that they can handle 40 cases. They can't. You're delivering an extraordinary concierge version of geriatric care management and you can't do it with a huge caseload. Uh, when I started out social work, Honestly, in truth, in Philadelphia, I had a caseload of 500. I could see everybody once a month. Well, can't do that. Um, so, and, and especially, you know, a mixture of caseloads because when you get to 24 hour care uh, with families and older people, there's a lot you have to do. And basically, you have to do it on a concierge way, in a concierge way. So you need to assign small caseloads. That means hiring other care managers who have specific skills. Um, you and they and the people that you hire have to have a lot high level of experience and education. These are the clinical skills and a psychodynamic understanding of families and older people, because the you know most of the families you're going to deal with are dysfunctional. Um, dysfunctional families have extraordinary problems and there's a whole chapter in the handbook of geriatric care management on the dysfunctional family and you should read it and um, because they're entitled and they are like those people in Downton Abbey you know the table has to be set just exactly so in Downton Abbey they were measuring how far the forks were from the spoons uh, I don't think that happens anymore but <clears throat> they want you know they want they want incredibly you know sort of difficult you know things done for them and uh, you know you have to know how to handle them and you have to have these dysfunctional entitled family skills so you want to hire somebody like that and then you want yourself as the owner to provide a high level of coaching to all of your care managers to sustain working with these entitled families and their persistent and insatiable demands I get that straight from Nick Newcomb who is hysterical and he started uh, Senior Bridge with Claudia fine <clears throat> and you know he's going off to do something else but he was really funny and uh, you know they they did a, a chapter in uh, care managers working with the aging family uh, about these families and you know it's one of his lines but you you know the, this can be daunting for your care managers and you need to do individual coaching to really help them BG BJ Split, Spitler is now deceased but one of the finest geriatric care managers I ever knew and she had a giant practice in uh, San Diego she brought in uh, a masseuse each week for her care managers I'm not saying you need to do that but this is the kind of tender loving care care managers need so this is who you have to hire and then <clears throat> you have to hire somebody who can juggle because lots of times you're driving the car to a, you know a very serious case a, you know something's blown up you get another call you know hopefully not you're not you know, you have a brand new car, that's why you need the Prius. <laughs> and, you know, the, the phone is not handheld, so you can still drive. And you've got to go after that to a new crisis. Um, and when you're, you know, visiting your client, you have to, you know, fill out a, a lot of forms on a computer, but you also have to do your billing at the same time. You have to multitask, so you have to 
be able to multitask and juggle a lot of different crises all at once. This is like ER medicine. It isn't, you know, it's it, a lot of it's triage and you've got to figure out, you know, what's the most important crisis to deal with, who's bleeding to death, and then go down the line from there. Okay, so uh, again, hire, hire a multitasker um, who can do this email, cell phone, make client contact and bill uh, all at the same time. You've got to measure hours of the GCM and, you know, coach them. Um, and the best way to do this is to figure out what's billable and not billable in the first place. You know, do that. What are the 15% non-billable in your area, in your, in your, in your, uh, agency what's the what are the 85 billable and teach that in the beginning you know to everybody that works for you and then every time you get a printout at the end of the month or every two weeks you know look at it and coach them don't yell at anybody but really you know this is a teaching process because again we're all social workers and nurses <clears throat> we need help okay bill for 85 percent of your time <clears throat> um your hourly fees need to be at an 85% utilization rate, and I've explained that over and over again. Therefore, you have to invoice every other week, and I would say every week, uh, because the hours billed that come in are going to pay your 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 uh, salaries, and you need to bill everything. Travel needs to be billed. Uh, no flat rates. This, again, drives me crazy. People say, oh, they do a flat rate for a geriatric care management a report. This is a written report. So, you know, you, you, you agree, you sign this, it's a flat rate. In some cases, you know, maybe they'll take 10 hours to do or five hours to do. Remember, you got to write it out, too. Um, but, you know, you get this huge dysfunctional case, you know, a lot of siblings fighting, um, you know, uh, everybody's disagreeing, uh, lawyers involved, conservatorship involved, and that takes 20 hours. But you've only billed for 10 because that's a flat fee. You're losing money. And this is a business. You have to measure billable hours. So no flat rates. Um <clears throat> so this is the reason, and it's an easy way to look at this. So to, you've got to make payroll every two weeks. And, you you know, during that, you've got to buy gas to travel. Your care managers do. So you have to know cash flow. So 20% of all the, the bills you send out, you know, at the beginning of the two-week period, in the first 30 days, only 20% of that comes in. But you've had to make two, two payrolls. That's hard to do. So within 31 to 60 days, the next month, about 60% of it comes in. But by that time, you've had to make four payrolls. 12% dribbles in in the third month, but you've had to make six payrolls and 5% uh, in 91 to 20, 120 days, and some you don't even get paid for. So you really need someone, a bookkeeper, who really understands this and can keep on top of it, reminding people nicely about billing, you know, sending out billing notices, but getting that money in. So that's the 85%. And again, know your hour, hourly worth. I talked about this. You are a highly, highly skilled person. And even plumbers charge more than you per hour. And boy, don't you need them. Um, and you uh, have to feel, as a social service or a healthcare professional, that you have a skill um, that is as billable as physicians and attorneys. And, you know, at the end of my 25 years, I was billing a lot because I was working, you know, with really difficult cases with attorneys all the time. And, um, you know, I submitted to the court that, you know, I held the case together. Um, this takes a lot of experience to do that. And you have to get over your ethical dilemma about billing because we all have it. I have it still, you know, because I was, I grew up wanting to serve the the not just the poor but you know the the unfairly dealt with in our society and that's why I became a social worker so I had this guilt in the beginning 
I used to make marketing calls, cold call marketing calls, and I'd be so nervous about talking to people. When they finally answered the phone, I would hang up in the beginning. <laughs> I'm always truthful about this, you know, so I didn't, you know, was nervous. Uh, eventually, I talked to everybody. I didn't care if they hung up on me. But um, so you don't set your hourly fee too low. You want to do a competition survey. Again, the competition survey will tell you what's the average going rate in your community. Start with that and then start raising it uh, and um, you know the difficulty too is that we've always been paid a salary I work for the new state of New Jersey state of California I got you know a check every two weeks I didn't care you know how much they were paying for heat or whether you know they needed a lot of air conditioning or they needed new furniture or new technological anything you know uh, I didn't know you know the expenses of running a business now you have them <clears throat> and you've got to know that <clears throat> you are basically only getting paid your salary if, you know, you can keep your cost under control. And that's really important, and you have to have somebody to do it. Uh, you can't suffer this background guilt, this ethical dilemma. You really need to work on it. Um, and I've, I've done many web webinars about that. Um, and then you change your hourly GCM um, fee that, you know, when you look at your fee and you think that, you know, that's high, um, it, you know, basically it's all the cost of doing business. You know, you're running a business. It's different than when you work for, you know, me, the Division of Youth and Family Services. They're a business too. They took care of that. I never had to worry about it. You've got to worry about it now. So you have to be on top of your cost, on top of, you know, the expenses that you're, you know, having to incur. So that's really important. And the last thing is don't sell services, sell products. And I, you know, I've been saying this for years in every webinar I've done. Uh, your mission has to be clear about this. Uh, you have to, you know, only build high-end customers that will choose you over the competition because you, what they do is they choose you over the competition because you have products that rival what other what other agencies that you're competing with don't have. And to the upper 10% products make sense. To a high-end customer, you know, products, you know, they, they wear Gucci or they, you know, buy, you know, uh, coach purses and uh, they go on Viking cruises because their friends will know that reflects their money. Uh, this is for you know, usually the nouveau riche, but, um, you know, these people are, they're used to products and aren't we all, you know, I, you know, I, I, I subscribe to consumer reports because I want to know what the best product is and, um, but I buy products. And I, you know, I, I buy products, you know, maybe that are healthier for other, for my family or for me, but I choose products and everyone does. So what you have to do is convert your services into products because somebody who comes to you and the problem they have is their mother needs to move. You need a moving product step-by-step step how you're going to do it. If someone comes to you and says their mother's moving out of the, uh, the fifth assisted living, she's driving them crazy, can you help do it? You need a product called Concierge Companion where the, you know, someone, you and, and a go in, find out, you know, what the difficulties she's having, you do an assessment, and then placing a Concierge Companion with them with the older person to, you know, help them adjust to the facility and find quality of life activities outside or inside the facility that can make them, them stay. Uh, if someone comes to you and their mother is dying, end of life is a great product for uh, geriatric care managers. You can get people into hospice long before hospice, you know, ever gets clients. They only get them in the last month of their life. That's the average. And, you know, hospice, you know, offers and death is five stages. So you can come in in an earlier stage. And if it's, you know, if you find it, you know, clinically important, move them into hospice then because hospice can go in and out on and on and on. So, you know, don't, don't, 
you know, like so many do people do on their website, say we're offering peace of mind. What's that mean? Or we are offering uh, an assessment. Nobody know. You know, they don't want. They want their mother to move. They don't want an assessment. What's that anyway? So um, you you know you you have to you have to change into products. And I'm in each case I do I make an offer every webinar and today I am to end this and um, I'm going to make an offer for attending today I have been doing I created the my geriatric care management operation manual uh, in 212 and I have been working one-to-one -one with a lot of geriatric care managers over the years a lot of them are in this class right now <laughs> <laughs> and um, it usually took us about a year to go through it because there's 20 modules and things happened. Holidays came up, people got sick, um, you know, they had to travel or they got really busy. By the middle of it, they were able to really generate a lot of income and so they couldn't, you know, every three weeks they could talk to me. So I decided to take the entire... Um, operations manual and this forms manual and the modules I was teaching it through and put them in a, in a Blackboard course. I've been doing that for about a year. So it's finished now and it's a self-paced course on products and procedures to market geriatric care management and deliver it with, um, and I'll go through what is in here. Uh, the class includes 20 PowerPoint modules with audio, me, me, you know, me speaking to you like I would in, you know, one to one, um, that cover the step by step uh, procedures in 14 products and services for Alca, Alca and GCM. It's 20 because there are three modules in uh, Home from the Hospital and five modules in End of Life. Um, uh, you will also get a marketing PowerPoint module uh, with marketing exercises and directions to sell with these 14 products. And then you'll have homework and there will be a marketing uh, exercise in homework in each product at the end so that you can not only figure out how to deliver it, but you will uh, learn how to market it. Um, in each product, you will be able to do that. There'll be 20 lecture videos um, that will be live, you know, live, me, you know, just like I am on YouTube if you chat, if you, uh, and you should, uh, <clears throat> sign up for my YouTube channel. And um, there will be lecture, mod mod there are a lecture module attached to each, each module that has the PowerPoint and the marketing. Homework, as I explained, uh, you'll be sending that to me each week and my grading will not be grading, it is going to be going in and that's what I always did with my care managers uh, and giving you better suggestions on how to do this. Um, there will be a Facebook group, it's already uh, in place, it's a closed Facebook group for everybody that's ever bought the manual and they interact on this but you will be able to interact with me on the Facebook group asking me questions about the uh, class and about problems that you're having and I will answer um, in each in each case and you know I'll be talking to you about your homework there's going to be a full bibliography um, you will get with it my geriatric care management operations manual and the forms manual and I will license that to you uh, with the 14 products and uh, the CEUs are in progress right now with ASBW Association of Social Welfare Boards and I will be getting uh, certification through ANA as well and probably a, num a number of others. So the price for it is $9.95 for the class, the manuals, uh, the you know everything that I just mentioned. Um, you can pay me through PayPal and that's what I've always used. Uh, there is a contract that has to come signed. It's down here, a signed contract before, because I'm licensing you intellectual property. And then, uh, 
you know, if you need to pay in a different way because you have more limited resources, you can pay me $300 a month in payments for four months instead of the $9.95. You can pay me $500 a month for two months. Um, and if you already have the manual and you didn't take you know, you didn't want to, you know, do the consultations over the 20, you know, the the 20 PowerPoints, and you want to do that again. I mean, you want to do that now. Uh, if you have the manual already, I will reduce the price to 450 just to take the class because you already have the manual and you won't have to, you know, buy that. Um, and there'll be a signed contract that you'll have to sign. This is only going to be available for seven days. So today is the 24th. And so uh, it will be available until next, thir next Friday, so a week from today. And then it ends. <clears throat> and, you know, it'll be back to 9.95. And when the CUs come in, it'll be 1,400. Um, but you will still get the CUs in reference.